All right, calculus students, it's a shorter video today on using the quotient rule to discover what the derivative of all the other trig functions is. Uh, so the first one we're going to do is go seek it, as you can see. Um, I'm going to do all of the trig functions, I think, except for cotangent. And then if you followed along, one of the questions on your homework is to actually do the same thing for cotangent. Uh, so let's look. Um, it says, hey, what's the derivative of cosecant? And to find this derivative, what we want to do is turn it into something that we actually know how to take the derivative of. So I'm going to take cosecant and just make it 1 over sine. So here it is. It's just f of x equals cosecant, which is 1 over sine. And now we're just going to use the quotient rule on that. Now remember, when you get to the derivative of the top part, um, it's going to be just 1. So here comes our derivative using our quotient rule from yesterday. And let's see. On the bottom, it's just uh, the bottom one squared. Then here's the bottom one. And then we've got the derivative of the bottom one, and the derivative of sine is cosine. And now we're going to do the numerator. And here in this section, we need the derivative of the numerator. And it's 1 right there. The derivative of 1 is 0. And then minus whatever the top is, which is 1. And it looks like this. Now, this gives you an answer that is a little clunky. And we'll try to make it look a little prettier so that we can memorize it. Here's our f prime. On the top, we have negative cosine. And then that's over uh, sine squared, which I'm going to call double sine. You know, sine times sine is sine squared. Because I don't want to memorize it as cosine over sine squared. It's in notebooks as cosine over sine squared, although that's accurate. Um, so what are we going to memorize this as? Well, you can see the cosine over sine, that's cotangent. So I'm going to just take this one and this one and make it cotangent. And then I've got a 1 over sine, a sine on the bottom, and that's cosecant. And then I've got this negative sine. And although that's not that nice looking, hey, that's the derivative of cosecant. It's negative cosecant cotangent. Yep, that's what it is. And we will be memorizing this. Let's try another one. Here's the derivative of secant this time. And you should be able to do this yourself, but hey, you're on a video, so we can do it together. So we're going to do 1 over cosine. So that's going to be uh, cosec uh, secant is 1 over cosine. And you can see the work is going to be very similar. And we'll see if you can anticipate the way that you're actually going to memorize this as well. So here we go. Here's our derivative. And hopefully by now you've got a nice rhythm going with your, uh, with your quotient rule. It's the bottom squared. It's the bottom one. It's the derivative of cosecant, which is negative sine, or the net derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And now we just need to add in our numerator derivatives. The derivative of the top is, again, 0. And then minus whatever the top is, which is 1. So there's a nice order. That's the way you should do your derivative. And here comes our answer. And you can see what I've got is negative 1 times a negative. So this time, it's a positive. So there's sine x over, and again, I'm going to write it as cosine cosine so we can get a good look at it and I'll give you a second to anticipate the way that we'll memorize this one it's f prime of x is equal to and here's sine over cosine hey that's tangent and then here's 1 over cosine hey that's secant and it looks like that Hey, we're going to memorize the derivative of secant as secant tangent. 
And if someone said to you, hey, show me where that derivative comes from, you would do exactly this, use the quotient rule. All right, we're gonna do one more, and then remember, you'll have one to do in your homework in this exact same way, and we're gonna do tangent. But this one comes with a little bit of a surprise finish here. So watch for the surprise finish. Here's f of x equals, and so I can get a good look at it and use my quotient rule. I'm just gonna call this sine over cosine, right there. And now we're gonna use our, we're gonna use our um, quotient rule again. It's the bottom one squared. It's the bottom one. It's the derivative of the bottom one, so it's the derivative of cosine, which we know to be negative sine. And now comes the top. Now, last time we had just the number up there, and it was zero and one twice on two of the ones that we did. But this time it won't be. So I need the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Hey, look, two cosines. And then we've got minus, and then whatever that top one is, which is gonna be sine. And we end up with this. So we have a little more uh, work to do to get this to be something reasonable. Here's f prime of x is equal to uh, cosine times cosine is cosine squared x. And then I've got negative sine times negative sine. So that's plus sine squared x. And that's over cosine squared x. And I'm hoping that you recognize this as an old friend from trigonometry. The sine squared plus the cosine squared is one. So this is f prime of x is equal to one over cosine squared. We're still not home with this one. We're not gonna be memorizing uh, one over cosine squared as our derivative because one over cosine is secant. So the nicest way to memorize this is secant squared. So what is the derivative of tangent? It's secant squared. We need to put all of our derivatives for our trig functions in one place. And so this is that one place. And I got a picture of these little post-it notes. In class today, I'll be giving everybody one of these to put in their notebook um, because you'll need to refer to this page, I'm certain, um, over and over again so that you can memorize these derivatives and you'll have some place to turn to if you've forgotten one and say you need it like a month and a half from now. So put this on maybe its own page or maybe its own half page so that all your derivatives are in one place. And then if you have one of these little sticky notes or you can make your own sticky note with a piece of tape and a, a little post-it note or colored paper so that you can get to this page nice and easily. Okay, so we're going to just reveal these derivatives. And notice there's one on here that we haven't done yet. Um, the derivative of sine is cosine, right? We've memorized that one. Now that one we already know. We don't need to re-memorize that one. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? So those are the two that we memorized right from, right from the very beginning. The derivative of tangent is one that we just did. It's secant squared, right? So there's secant squared. We did the two clunkiest ones, the cosecant right here, that's negative cosecant cotangent, right? Negative cosecant cotangent. And then let's see, we did secant, and that was secant tangent, right? That was secant tangent. And so that gives you just one that um, we, we haven't done, but these have a nice pattern to it. Like this one's cosine, this one's negative sine, this one's secant squared. I bet you can guess what this one is. This is negative cosecant cotangent. This one's secant tangent. This is how each pair has a negative sign. So if you guess that this one would be negative, you guess correctly. Oh, I forgot I have to write this one by hand. So if you guess that this one was gonna be a negative, you're correct. And what do you think it's gonna be? If you're thinking that it's gonna be negative cosecant squared x, then you are correct. And remember, in your homework, you'll make this cosine over sine, and you'll discover that it is negative cosecant squared. Okay, so put a sticky note on those. And I'm going to get a highlighter out, and I'm going to show you something that you probably don't realize. And that's if you look at these, there are negative signs on three of them. 
right? There's negative signs on three of them. And I will tell you that calculus students typically don't miss the whole thing, they miss the negative sign. So let's highlight uh, the ones that have a negative sign. It would be this one. Oh, my highlighter is, is like a little too dark. So I'm gonna see if I can get a lighter highlighter. A lighter highlighter. Which one of these colors would be lighter? It seems pretty light. I guess I'll just use the yellow color and hope, it's, hope it goes through. So let's try this one, a lighter color. I'll just highlight lightly. That's still pretty light. Okay, that one I'm gonna have to highlight underneath. Okay, so highlighting underneath. So here is cosine. That one has a negative. And then here is cotangent, and that one has a negative. And then here's cosecant, and that one has a negative. And do you see, do you see what um, all the negative ones have in common? Do you see what they have in common? That's right. They all start with C, making it incredibly easy to memorize which ones have a negative sign. Cosine starts with C, cotangent starts with C, and cosecant starts with C. Now don't confuse yourself. The answer here starts with C, but that doesn't matter, right? It's just uh, whether the question starts with C that determines whether it gets a negative sign. Okay, so there it is. Your six deriv uh, derivative questions all in one place. Hey, we're gonna do uh, two more problems. Here's number one. And I'd like you just to think about the way you might do this one. Think about it for a second. Think about it. Think about it. And most students, when they think about doing this problem, what they think about is using the quotient rule. And the quotient rule will get you the right answer, but the quotient rule is actually unnecessary in this problem because you can actually split it up it's only one thing on the bottom. So you could just put this, and I'm gonna rewrite this slowly, as one over sine. Hey, that right there is cosecant, and we just memorized the derivative of cosecant. And then this is cosine over sine, which is cotangent, and we just memorized the derivative of cotangent. So um, this right here really is just cosecant x, which we memorized, minus cotangent x, which we memorized, right? There's your cosecant, there's your cotangent. Hey, when there's one thing on the bottom, split it up is almost always your best method of finding the derivative. So here, this will test your resolve on these without looking at them. Do you know the derivative of cosecant? If you said it's negative cosecant x, uh, cotangent x, you are correct. And then what is the derivative of cotangent? Hey, it starts with c, so it's gonna be a negative, and we already have a negative, so that'll be positive. And the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And I'm gonna pretty this up by factoring out a cosecant, just because I can. I'm not sure how much better this is actually gonna make it look, but I'm gonna factor out a cosecant that's gonna give me Let's see, negative cotangent x plus cosecant x. That didn't really make it look much better. But if it was multiple choice, this is probably the answer that you would see right there, that second one. One of those two, but probably this one. All right, one last problem to go. And um, this is a version of the problem with the graph that we had on yesterday's homework. It's actually an easier version. And what they've done up here is they've given you a list. Um, so we're going to do this one, and you'll see this one over and over again on tests and AP review problems. Uh, but you can see that f of x is g of x times h of x, and we're asked to find f prime of 2. So the first thing we're going to do is just come here and say, okay, what rule do I need? Well, it's two things multiplied together. So if you said, oh my gosh, I need the product rule, you are 100% correct. So I'm going to write uh, my derivative. And here it comes. I'm gonna leave the first one alone. That's gonna be g of x. And I'll take the derivative of the second one and I'll call it h prime. And now I'll just reverse it. So I'll leave um, the h of x alone this time. And I'll take the derivative of my g of x and g prime. Now, it is true that with the product rule, it's a little holly gully if you have these in a different order, but you have one of them with the derivative of the other one the other one with the derivative of the first one,
then you're going to have the correct derivative. Notice my nice notation is marked f prime, and now I'm going to find f prime of 2. This notation is not optional. You don't have this uh, uh, notation, and I'll definitely take one point off. And the AP exam is expecting you to see, to show the correct notation. So first, a generic derivative, then a derivative with 2 plugged in with it marked f prime of 2. This is the correct notation and one that you really need to get used to. So it looks like this. And then yesterday we looked these up on a graph. Well, this time they just gave them to them. I've, see, I, I've seen them when they give them to you like this. I've seen it when you look them up at a big table and there's like extra values and you just have to look up the ones you want. And as yesterday, I've seen you have to look these up on a graph and you'll get exposure to all of those varieties of types of questions here. So g of two is right here, and it's one, so that one's one. And then h prime of two is over here, and it's five. There's five. And then h of two is this one over here, and that's negative two, and it's here. And then g prime of two is this one, and it's negative three. Hey, we used all the ones they gave us. There weren't any extras. A lot of times they give you something that has some extras, so that you're like, what's that extra one for? Um, this is going to be 6, and then this is going to be 11, and hey, the answer is 11. Nice and easy. All right, that is our lesson for today. The worksheet that you're going to be doing is shorter. This video is shorter. In your group now, I would like you to get close or maybe even finish that worksheet um, that you have. Good luck.